Collins Practice Tests for IELTS. Copyright HarperCollins Publishers 2013. Test 1. Listening. You will hear a number of different recordings and you will have to answer questions on what you hear. There will be time for you to read the instructions and questions and you will have a chance to check your work. All the recordings will be played once only. The test is in four sections. At the end of the test, you will be given 10 minutes to transfer your answers to an answer sheet. Now turn to section 1. Section 1. You will hear a telephone conversation between an operator and a caller. The caller is reporting a stolen mobile phone. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 5. you will see that there is an example that has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Good morning, Z Mobile Services. This is Tess speaking. How can I help? I want to report a stolen mobile phone. Could you confirm your postcode, please, sir? It's CN21EB. The caller's postcode is CN21EB, so CN21EB has been written in the space. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 5. Good morning, Z Mobile Services. This is Tess speaking. How can I help? I want to report a stolen mobile phone. Could you confirm your postcode, please, sir? It's CN21EB. Thanks. And your house number? 34. OK. Can you give me the telephone number of the phone that was stolen? Yeah, it's... Wait a minute. It's 07890. 07890. 623. 623-570-570-OK. Okay. So it's 07890-623-570. Yeah, that's right. Can you just confirm your name? Yeah, it's Thomas Green. Is that Thomas spelt T-H-O-M-A-S? No, there's no H. It's just Thomas. T-O-M-A-S. OK. So you said your phone was stolen? That's right. I reported it to the police this morning. That's good. I'll need to take down your crime reference number. I've got it here. It's CZ... CZ... Dash 17624. 17624-5. 5. Thank you. Let me run through that again. CZ... 624-5. That's it. Just a few more details. Can I have your IMEI number? Oh, what's that? It's the International Mobile Equipment Identity Number. It's a... Sorry, I don't have it. Not to worry. We'll deal with that in a moment. I just need to have the date and time your mobile was stolen. That's easy. Between 1 and 2 o'clock yesterday. That's 1 to 2 p.m. on the 16th of August. Thank you. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 6 to 10.
Now listen and answer questions 6 to 10. Now, I just need a few details of the incident, if you wouldn't mind. Sure. I was in the Bangs Coffee Bar in the city centre. I definitely had my phone with me when I sat down. In fact, I remember checking to see if I had any text messages. But when I came to leave, it wasn't on the table. Did you leave the phone unattended at any time, perhaps to go to the toilet? No. That's the funny thing. Like I told the police, it was very busy in there because it was lunchtime and all the tables and chairs were pushed really close together. There were a couple of other people at my table. Someone must have leaned across when I wasn't looking and slipped my phone into their pocket. Oh dear. I know. It's such a pain. I suppose I'll have to pay for a replacement. Fortunately, you're covered by our 12-month care plan, so there won't be a charge for replacing it this time. But I have to tell you, if it happens again within the next three months, you may have to pay a fee. Fair enough. How soon can you send me a new one? We've got two options. You can get it sent by courier for next day delivery for a small fee, or we can send it in the standard post free of charge. You should allow about five days for it to arrive. That's a bit difficult. I'm going back to Australia the day after tomorrow to see my parents for a month. Any chance you could send it to their address? No, I'm sorry. We can only send replacements to UK addresses. In that case, I'd better have next day delivery then. OK, so just to confirm the delivery address, is it 34 Solent Gardens? That's it. The final thing we need to do is to put a block on your phone. You mean to stop the thief from using it? I was wondering about that. What I need to do is put your IMEI number into the central register, which will essentially prevent anyone else from making calls from your phone. Now, the IMEI number is a 15-digit number that you can see underneath the phone's battery. Do you have a record of it? No, sorry. Is there any other way to find the number? Yes. We usually trace it from a call you've recently made. In a moment, I'll put you through to my colleague who deals with that. By the time you've finished with him, your mobile will no longer operate. Good. And with your new phone, I'll also send you a crime prevention leaflet, which will give you some tips on how to protect your phone from being stolen again. Thanks. You've been really helpful. Don't mention it. Just putting you through to my colleague now. That is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 2. Section 2. You will hear a presenter on a radio show. The presenter is reading out letters sent in by listeners to the show. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Now listen and answer questions 11 to 16. Hi, you're listening to Mark Ambrose, and I'll be with you through to midday on Talkback, the show where you tell us what you think about Radio Western. I'm sure you've all heard we have a new boss here at Radio Western, and she's very keen to get your feedback. Well, you've certainly taken her invitation seriously. We'll be dipping into the post bag for your feedback in just a moment, and speaking to a surprise guest or two later in the show. I must start by saying a big thank you to Tony Marsons. Judging by your letters, he did a great job of covering the show last week whilst I was away. Thanks, Tony, if you're listening. And thanks for all the emails asking about my holiday. I had a long, rather boring flight home late last night, but I must say I had a wonderful time. The food was absolutely delicious, and the locals we spoke with were really friendly. Shame about the weather, which was an absolute washout. 
But you can't have everything, I suppose. And the kids loved it, so everyone was happy. Anyway, on to the first of your letters. Sally from Liverpool is very concerned about the consequences of the cutbacks we've been experiencing here at Radio Western, in particular whether some of our late-night music shows could be facing the axe. We're force-fed a great deal of pop music throughout the day, writes Sally, and some of your listeners look forward to the more niche musical genres you cover in the evening. Are these in danger when you rearrange the schedule? Not at all, Sally. In fact, look out for one or two exciting new shows over the coming weeks. We've got a brand new classical music show coming soon, and the return of the ever-popular Chris Green with his show on international folk music. And, of course, there's Carol Whitaker's History of Jazz every Friday night. Hopefully, this will put your mind at rest, Sally. Before you hear more of the radio show, you have some time to look at questions 17 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 17 to 20. John from Leicester writes in to point out that many of our guests on Talkback and other shows seem to run out of time before they have the chance to finish the interview. It happens again and again, writes John. As the programme draws to a close, guests get rushed and many questions go unanswered. Why don't you offer some kind of after-show online channel where the guest can continue answering listeners' questions? I think that's a great idea, John. And, as you go on to say, if it were recorded, people who don't get the chance to hear the live show could catch up later. We'll certainly pass this one up to management. I'm sure a service like this would go down really well on our website. Now, Clive has a question that would be of interest to all us over 50s fans of Radio Western. Clive wants to know why we don't feature more issues related to this age group and cater more to this group's taste in music. As Clive explains, As a regular listener, I'm concerned about your age profiling. Presenters seem intent on covering topics that appeal very much to the 30-somethings, which is great for them, but what about people of other ages? Clive would like to see music shows aimed at the older generation and more on problems facing the over 50s in our consumer affairs shows. Well, Clive, we'd certainly hate to think you're feeling excluded from our schedule. What about other listeners? Do you think we're getting it about right, or is there room for improvement? That is the end of Section 2. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to Section 3. Section 3. You will hear two university students discussing how they should prepare for a presentation they are to give. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 25. Now listen and answer questions 21 to 25. Hi Kelly, how are you? Fine, thanks. Do you still have time to talk about our presentation? Yeah, for sure. We need to get going on this, don't we? Well, it's next Wednesday, so yes. thought it was Thursday. No, that's the other group. We're doing ours the day before. I've just seen Fiona. She's going to be a bit late, so shall we just get started? Yes, fine. We're definitely doing it on women in education, aren't we? 
I know we talked about women in politics, but are we going for education? Yes, that's right. Now, it's not too long, is it, the presentation? They said to keep it to about half an hour. Maybe we can sort out who's doing what today. Yes, good idea. One thing we do need to sort out is a projector and laptop. We're going to use PowerPoint or something like that for the tool, can't we? Yes. They said we could book a projector and laptop from technical services if we needed them, because it's not in the lecture theatre, is it? I know there's already one set up in there, but... No, the lecture theatre was booked. We're in the seminar room. Before you hear more of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 26 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 26 to 30. OK, so what's the next step? We need to work out who's doing what, don't we? Well, we all know the subject, seeing as our last essay was on this topic. Yes, but we can't just stand up and ramble on. <laughs> It'll need to be structured. I've got an idea. Fiona's essay was brilliant, wasn't it? Why don't we base the talk on that? We can always add bits here and there if we think it needs padding out anywhere. That's a good idea. Shall we ask her to get a copy of it for both of us? Yes, I'm sure she won't mind. We can always let everyone know at the start of the presentation that it's Fiona's work. But we don't want to just read it out. That'll be really boring. It's probably best to make notes from it so that we can improvise a bit on the day. Why don't we break the essay down into sections and the three of us can each take on one section? We can all make notes on our own part and add to it where we think it needs it. That way we can try to make it our own. Yes, I like it. So let's ask Fiona to start the talk off and bring it to a close. She can take on the introduction and conclusion. I know she divided the essay into the situation for women in the past and then compared it to how things are now. So why don't I take the bit on the past and you talk about the situation for women as it is now? OK. If we give ourselves till the weekend to work on it, we can get together on Saturday to see how it's looking. Now, what about the presentation itself? Someone will need to build that and find images. We don't just want to fill each slide with a load of text, do we? No, we don't. Before I forget, I can sort out the laptop and projector. I've got to go down to technical services to get them to have a look at my laptop. They reckon they can get it to run a bit faster. But the presentation, who's good with computers? Do you fancy having a go? I don't mind. But I'll wait until we've met up on Saturday just to make sure we've all got our notes. We'll need images, won't we? Shall we all search for our own to fit our section of the talk? Yes, and then if you and Fiona email them to me, I'll add them to the presentation. Right, that was easy, wasn't it? And look, here comes Fiona. Let's ask her about her essay. That is the end of section three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section four. Section four. You are going to hear a lecturer giving a talk on time management strategies. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 37.
Now listen and answer questions 31 to 37. Hi everyone. Today Mark has come in to talk to you about time management strategies. If you remember, in the introductory session, I told you the difference it can make to your studies. So this is an incredibly important session. Thanks, Mark. Hello. Yes, I'm Mark. I lecture over in the business school, but I have a bit of a reputation for being rather evangelical about time management, and I'm often invited into other courses to talk about it. So, here I am. You've now come to the end of your first week at university, and you've probably noticed how different it is from school or college. For some people, this step up comes very naturally, but in our experience, many students find this new regime a challenge. People aren't watching over you anywhere near as much, and you're expected to be far more responsible for your own learning. Research I've carried out shows that 65% of male students have poor time management skills. It's not quite so high for females, but still, a majority of 55% would benefit from developing these skills. Students who don't will see their grades and general progress suffer as deadlines are missed or work gets rushed, with a decline in the quality of work as a result. In a nutshell, you need to be aware of the big picture, to know what's coming down the line at any given time and what needs prioritizing. Start by creating that big picture using our yearly academic planner. And don't hide it away in a drawer somewhere. Give it pride of place somewhere, like on the bedroom wall, so you'll have daily reminders of what's approaching. During this first week, you'll have been given seminar and lecture times, essay deadlines, exam dates, and so on. Add these dates to your planner and add any new deadlines, such as seminar presentations or tutorial dates, as you get them. Those important non-academic occasions shouldn't be ignored either. Trips back home for family celebrations need to be factored in. Looking at your planner, the first thing that will strike you is how much time you have on your hands. Just a few seminars here and there, a couple of lectures on Tuesday and Thursday. Easy, you think. But this is very misleading indeed. Your planner only looks empty because it doesn't show all that essential self-study you'll need to do. And, as there's no one else structuring this time for you, you'll need to manage this yourself. You don't want to waste those hours between lectures or seminars in the cafe. Use this time to read through your lecture notes, prepare for the next seminar, or do some research for that next assignment. Essentially, structure your days on a 9-to-5 basis as if you were a full-time employee and start to calculate how you're going to fill those gaps efficiently. Start by considering how you're going to meet all those deadlines. If there are any cooks among you, you'll know that putting a nice meal on the table requires more than just, well, cooking. You need to research the ingredients, buy them, chop, slice, mix, and so on. Cooking itself is a long way into the process. It's the same with that essay you have to write or that presentation you might have to make. They need careful planning beforehand, and that time needs to be built into your preparation. Start prioritizing what needs doing and when. Download our monthly and weekly planners to help you map it all out. Before you hear the rest of the lecture, you have some time to look at questions 38 to 40. Now listen and answer questions 38 to 40. And here's an important point. When you're planning what to do, be task-oriented rather than time-oriented and set achievable goals. Finding images for a presentation, for example, is measurable. Simply writing, research, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. isn't. This task-oriented approach will be immensely helpful, 
forcing you to break your preparation down into individual, achievable steps. Try to assess when busy periods are likely to occur, such as the week leading up to an assignment deadline. Are there any evenings during the week you could put aside for extra work? And, just as importantly, make a note of any times you won't want to be working. You'll need time for you, sessions in the gym, evenings when your favorite programs are on TV. Don't forget to schedule in time for non-academic activities like going shopping or doing the laundry. It's best to have a fixed time each week for jobs like these so they don't interfere with your academic work. Finally, decide where you're going to do your self-study. Will you be distracted by the TV, the Internet, or friends if you stay in your room? Perhaps the library will be a better place. Anywhere that encourages you to prevaricate should be avoided at all costs. Starting with the big picture and then working towards individual goals will leave you feeling in control rather than being pulled here and there, firefighting as the next deadline looms. That is the end of section four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.